Okay, let me know when you're... Hello everyone, um, I am Francesca Tabor, I'm the founder of uh, Fashion AI. I'm delighted to be joined today by Zin and Hemily. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about um, pride, um, we're going to be talking about inclusivity um, in the digital space, so in the Web3 metaverse space, um, and also in, in fashion. Um, so I think to start with, it would be great to do some introductions. So Zin, would you like to uh, to start? Absolutely. Um, it's a pleasure to be here for the first time, and I'm really looking forward to doing the next, you know, forever, basically, sessions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm Jin. Uh, full name is Jin Kada, and I am the co-founder of Estera Swimwear, and I'm also the podcast host and producer of Fashion This Week. The origin really behind both of them is that um, I feel that a lot more needs to be done in uh, the fashion world, uh, predominantly inclusivity, whether it's from um, sexuality, whether it's from size, um, you know, the whole spectrum really needs to be improved upon and uh, done in a very authentic manner. And we're going to be going into that as well. Um, but yeah, that's really me in a nutshell. And if you do want to check out my uh, podcast, it's actually going to be launching at the end of July. Great. Well, thank you so much. And Emily. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys today. And I am Emily Rodriguez, the bit blonde, follow crypto influencer, founder and creator of rnco.ai a digital marketing agency powered by AI, my new project that I'm working on. And I'm a core member at Minds and Dow, which is um, fashion uh, Dow for fashion brands in Metaverse. And I am also LGBTQA+, and it's a pleasure to represent diversity and inclusion inside business. And yeah, I'm very excited. Amazing. I have to say, by the way, I'm just so here for your teeth. Really off topic, but like they are just coming through. They're beautiful. They're white. They're straight. It's making me. Oh, okay. I probably get loads yeah, of like. I'm very jealous as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's delight. <laughs> right. So, um, it'd be really great to actually learn a little bit about what you do and um, explain a little bit, I guess, for people that might not be familiar with Web3, for example. And I know that I've met quite a few people, even if they are of the young generation, they actually don't know exactly what uh, Web3 or Generation 3 is. Yeah. So Web3 stands for a decentralized world. Everything will be decentralized, very different from our current app and website and internet model we used to use. So I think there is a lot of, uh, how to explain a nice way, people complicate Web3 too much, but it's just a decentralized system where you can build decentralized apps, decentralized websites, and decentralized you know, communities, metaverses, it's very important and I'm working out on a Web3 guide and I hope to help millions of people to understand Web3 in a very simple and nice way. Amazing. And I think that's a really good point, um, this idea of, of decentralization. So you can look at it from a, a tech angle, um, but you can kind of look at it from a how we humans you know, work together um, you know, it used to be all this sort of pyramid structure, um, lots of silos in companies, you know, you, you go to university and you have to study this one subject area and be a specialist. And now everything's flatter and we're talking about community um, and a DAO is kind of the extension of a community. Could you maybe talk about that? What, how important is community in the web three de decentralized space and uh, maybe you, afterwards you can sort of touch on the concept of yeah. a DAO, that would be great. Yeah, so DAOs are groups, you know, random groups in a blockchain space. And it's very important, like if you are women or LGBTQA+, any topic, you can build your own DAO and be decentralized 
And the difference is everybody has the right to vote and participate as a decentralized community and system. So it's not like one person will benefit only. So the entire community has to benefit. That's the main point of having a DAO. And they can be connected with other DAOs also, which is really, really good. This is so cool. This is actually news to me and I'm going to have to like do some feverish Googling after our conversation. Um, I actually really want to talk as well about um, R and Co and a little bit about what really prompted you to set that up as a founder. Yeah. So I'm in crypto for the past three years and I realized that I spend a lot of time and effort in marketing, working with broke marketing agencies and broke projects. And when AI came up really strong, you know, when we had this hype from ChatGPT, I understood that AI is going to take over marketing. And I decided to create a place where all agencies can work together powered through AI. So it's basically an umbrella for all marketing agencies. And the main idea is to build a platform where AI is going to do marketing itself and you can just share positions and contracts with all the marketing agencies. This is very cool. And I feel like this is pretty much like ahead of the curve of what other people are offering. And uh, at least in the fashion world, uh, it's going to be quite important to be really um, anticipating what's going to be the next move. And I think AI is just so on it when it comes to predicting things. So much so, obviously, that we're even seeing it um, working out, you know, how much product we should order as well. It's not just from a marketing point of view. So really interesting to hear about your origin story. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, Out of curiosity, can you actually uh, talk to me about how um you work with other partners um through your agency so yeah basically we share contracts together so instead of having employees the idea is like let's say you have a marketing agency and i have my marketing agency so instead of getting people to work for us we would just work together between agencies so that's like you maximize the marketing strategies between marketing agencies and not employees anymore and you power everything through AI and also you know it's a very good idea and also challenging for lots of people because web 2 people they don't get the idea of web 3 where it's everything uh, it's a collaboration between agencies and web 2 it's a lot of competition and I think competition is really healthy, but in Web3, it's a little bit different. It's like you have competition, but you work together. That's and exactly I, how. So when it comes to AI, AI is definitely, you know, ChatGBT, it's replacing a lot of jobs. Um, you know, it's ChatGBT, you can write a blog, an ebook. you can probably over a weekend publish a book. Uh, whether it's going to be any good or not is, is another question. Um, and soon we'll have, you know, 90% of content created from, uh, you know, the same source. So we're all going to be kind of regurgitating. It's going to be like Chinese whispers. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, it's going to be really rare to find that, you know, unique content and unique stance. The problem with this, um, so the same thing happens with um, mid journey and creating images, they do start to look a little bit similar uh, over time. Of course, you can feed more, you know, um, images in to, to create that. Is are we perpetuating biases? So, for example, whether it's chat GBT or mid journey, you ask, you know, you talk about a doctor, it will assume that the doctor's a man, for example, uh, and it will perpetuate beauty stereotypes. Um, and it won't include, you know, a diverse points of view and things like that. As someone from that community who's ha- delving deep into the AI space, how do you feel about, you know, working with tools that essentially are trained on biased data and and from 
2011, I think it was, that it's trained up until. Well, I think, you know, everything has two sides. AI also has, you know, the good and the bad part. That's why we need experts and all the marketing partners and blockchain developers, because I don't do only marketing. We also have advisory, you know, consultancy, and a lot of things, uh, a lot of developers, blockchain developers, and mainly my marketing mainly is crypto today, as I am in crypto. But, you know, we come into the mass adoption very soon. So the entire world will be in. And we need to know how to use these tools. That's the main point. That's why we need to combine experts and work together. Yeah, precisely. Um, I absolutely think that this does leak in a bit of a political angle, your point of view, and rightly so. This is something that's a serious topic. We do want people that are diverse to actually feel included. Um, and this is really a topic of AI ethics, in my opinion. And I think this is something that we really need to start seeing people from government take seriously and actually write legislation that can be applied in a global way, especially because um, we're going to see some issues in businesses if they're not on the same page, if the laws are not identical, you're going to have issues with businesses trying to work outside of countries that don't um, you know, for, for example, the EU, all of their laws are the same, so every other country can work together easily. If you're talking about the UK versus France, that's when we're going to have issues, and it's going to be very important for us to make sure that our laws are very compatible. Um, but yeah, AI ethics is definitely a really interesting one, and I have a bit of a spicy hot take on that, which is, um, so the people behind ChatGPT, OpenAI, have been campaigning for, um, you know, tighter regulations, but it has been evidence that they've actually been lobbying for looser legislation so that they can do more work. Whatever that is, I have no idea, but that's a very interesting take. And it's something that definitely makes me raise an eyebrow. I still mm -hmm. use ChatGPT, um, but it's one of those things where, you're cautious about it as well. You're interested to see how it unfolds. Absolutely. And to add to that, I totally agree. You know, the, the world is very complicated with different legal systems, you know, looking at crypto, for example, uh, and NFTs. That was, you know, different in different parts of the world. So if you're into, you know, pro innovation, you'd likely want to go to, I don't know, Portugal, some of these other um, looser countries but then as you grow you want to you know work with people around the world so that totally makes sense something a tool that I've only just come across on the AI side which is really interesting is um, it's it's still a medical research um, but you can doctors can now show a patient an image and then they can scan your, your brain. I don't know how they do it. And they can see what you are thinking, not even what you're seeing. So um, the implications of that are that you can then mind read. You can then record people's dreams. Um, and if you look at the brain, you've got, and you're looking at marketing is the subconscious mind. It's not just, yeah. you know, a logical decision. When you're buying chocolate or you're buying, you know, that, that Ferrari, it's all... On your subconscious desires none of it is is oh god um, a lot of them are i would say on the yeah whole. that's a little bit you know uh, so, so that's deeper, quite scary then... it, 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 it has a lot of positives you know if you are a psychologist you know now treating depression so they can then probably record what they're seeing if it's a trauma, they can then go into that, you know, see what are they seeing? How are they feeling at the same time to link those two things together? Because not necessarily, if you see something, it might not, yeah. for some people it might trigger a positive emotion. Some people might trigger a negative emotion. That is obviously yeah. a big diversion, but I just wanted to throw it out there, just to get your opinion. I think we've gone too far with AI, with these sorts of tools. Do you think we should just take a step back and say what are we getting into here 
can, can, wow. can we deal with the amount of that's that's coming away of, everything um, will change you know with the ai even the law like what is going to happen with the lawyers and who is going to sign is it a smart contract because it's smart contract i mean they are contracts between people on a blockchain but they don't even need to get into a lawyer so everything will change in the society with ai yeah yeah no you're right even lawyers are are threatened you can sort of use chat gbt to create a contract really easily now um yeah, yeah very interesting what do you think Sin? do you think we've gone too far uh with ai do you think we need to sort of step back reflect make sure that you know our ethics and morals are you know in in place before we sort of start to take these big leaps forward so it's a very strange one i mean the first reaction i had when you were talking about this medical story was jesus bloody christ they're gonna find out that i have really weird thoughts as a neurodiverse person because like you know sometimes i'm looking at someone they're having a full-blown conversation but then there's like a totally different like a music video playing in my head right Oh, wow. um, so I'm going to be like outed first things first is my mind. <laughs> outed for, for all of your crazy <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, I mean, that's it's the ultimate form of privacy. Like you right? can present yourself, but then your thoughts are private. No one will ever know what's going in your head, hopefully. Yeah, but honestly, otherwise, aside from that, I see, I still see benefits in that. Yes, um, people could maybe take it too far in a bad way. But I think that there's also the flip side where underdogs can probably take it too far and take advantage in a good way. And I say that because um, a little bit of background about myself is that I actually was a very junior person before I went freelance. And that was because um, really like cards on the table, they made me believe that I was junior and then when I went freelance I realized oh my gosh I'm on a really professional level I'm very senior I can talk to directors and tell them exactly what they need to do I understand their vision I know how to dictate it and I know how to support other junior members and make sure they actually progress well so I see a space where junior members can actually become a lot more independent and use AI tools to become much better brands than what we've got at the moment where we've got quite a fair few people that will take any moment um whether it's political whether it's covid whether it's um you know anything and make redundancies left right and center so i am actually uh for the idea that it can also be taken the piss out of for lack of a better word in a different direction and other people can kind of take power in a good way but yeah that's definitely I know I think I think you're right um you know big companies will look at it and say I've got all of these the staff and you know we, we just a, a lot of companies as soon as they get a, a funding round they'll say I'm going to hire you know 100 people and then they realize they don't need them and then with AI they're probably going to start to shrink we've already seen a lot of job losses in the tech space but then simultaneously we'll have you know the, the the freelancer world who are suddenly they don't need to you know form a, a company and they can just sort of partner with other people they can use ai as a as a tool to empower themselves uh, emily could you tell us a little bit about your journey from the kind of traditional corporate world to finding your feet as a sort of as a freelancer and, yeah you know working in the business world being entrepreneurial getting into crypto what what were the initial stages like and what were some of the, the sort of maybe stumbling blocks at the very early stages yeah it was very tough you know it's very beautiful out there on linkedin social media but entrepreneurship it's really tough you know you need to do something that you're really patient about because if not you're not gonna do it it's really tough but it's worth it. If you love what you're doing, it's really worth it. And when I went to the trading course, I felt very intimidated as a woman in this room with guys. 
But I say, you know, I, I am going to learn this no matter, you know, how long it will take. And I'm going to teach women also how to become financially free. Because I feel like they kind of hide a lot of things from us for no sense. And, you know, it's no reason, really. They made things look really difficult to learn. But I took it as a challenge. And, you know, I say for myself, I'm going to do this for everybody that can't be here. And I'm going to teach and I'm going to give my best out there. That's everything in the world today to be, you know, representative, to be a woman in business. I believe we all hate things that we don't want to, but we kind of, you know, we kind of stick to it. And I think things are changing also, which is good. With Web3, we have more visibility. And I think it's very important to do something that you like and be strong. And, you know, I say I'm going to learn anyways, even if they say whatever they want, if they talk behind me and I'm going to teach all the women also. And that's what I'm doing. I'm very patient about it. Absolutely. That's uh, such an amazing story. And I think what I really like about that is that um, you're touching on a few things that I really love about this new era of like, you know, technology, but also of younger people, Gen Z specifically. And that is that there's no real, um, they don't care for gatekeeping. They think that gatekeeping is a barrier because it is, it's in the name. And um, they don't care for it. So you'll see a lot of communities on TikTok where they are spilling everything about how, you know, this is how I did exactly what I did for setting up a business. And here it is so that you don't have to go through the whole journey of learning it the way I had to. And I think we're going to see a lot of people that are just going to be like, you know what, I've done the hard work. I don't want you to do it. So here it is spelled out very clear and maybe some tips on top of what I've learned so far. Um, but yeah, generosity is definitely the new um, era rather than gatekeeping. I do think gatekeeping is very web too, to be honest. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And that's why with um, Fashion AI, we're trying to, you know, help nurture these new skills, Mid journey is a great starting point for anyone who wants to create fashion designs. And then there's, you know, stable diffusion and other generative AI tools. Then you can go into the digital fashion space, which is all about 3D modeling. It's a bit like being a, you know, a, a game designer or, or, or an animator. Um, and there are so many tools out there. And, and I think the great thing about having a community is everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses. So they can all collaborate together um, help one another and it's about creating that that sort of nurturing um, community <laughs> um, so, and so one question I had kind of to bring it back to LGBTQ and uh, and pride and all of these um, aspects so there are tons of pride events you know every year brands get involved it's similar in a way to the sustainability movement Suddenly, you know, brands will sponsor these events, they'll get involved. Um, but then afterwards, you don't really hear much about it. So with sustainability, even COP, there's a lot of talk, yeah. not a great deal of change mm -hmm. uh, because the businesses need to change. The whole, everything needs to change to, to make some fundamental shifts. Could you tell us a little bit from your perspective on the idea of, not greenwashing, but rainbow washing, sort of brands jumping onto the bandwagon of the pride community. And how can we shift from a more superficial involvement um, with these campaigns to something that is like, you know, people mobilizing together and really actually making a change? Because it's not that obvious what those changes are from my perspective. And I would love to hear what practical advice you would have on how, how do you make the world more sort of equal and inclusive yeah I think uh, first of all we see 
rainbow washing every year. You know, all the companies, central banks, they all put with the flags there. But then after next month, it's like everybody's gone and people just come to enjoy the hype. And, you know, it's really tough to keep tracking those companies and see what they're actually doing. But I think the right way is to invest in projects that are actually doing something for the community and make sure they are actually following what they say, you know, because in some countries you cannot even talk about LGBTQA+. But in the rest of the world, it's such a thing that everybody wants to earn money on the campaigns, but after they all disappear. So. Yeah. You have to find the right groups and the right DAOs and the right community to invest. But I think with blockchain and the centralized uh, web also, it's going to change a little bit here because people can see more what is going on in the companies. Absolutely. I think this is the transparency that we will be craving for so that public the public can be much more critical because, um, you know, the way that, for example, cops have been working is very uh, cheeky because some of these keynote speakers, some of these sponsors are from big oil companies. And that is just like completely not the point of um, any of the COP meetings. Um, and, and for that, to be honest, I, I really wish that there was a lot more transparency on that front. Another area that I feel so many people really need to get educated on is your pension fund. And this seems really boring, but a lot of these pension funds, you know, you're saving your money. What is that for? Like, why are you never seeing it? Those pension investment funds are actually using that money to invest in other companies to make more money off of it. So. What they're doing is they are finding things that will create loads of money. And unfortunately, that means they will go for anything. They're very agnostic. And that means they will go for things like, um, you know, a country, um, you know, a company that's based in a country that doesn't support LGBTQIA plus values or um, anything else like that. Um, So we're going to have to be a lot more critical about um, our own finances so a great way to do that is to definitely learn about the way that these areas work like pension which is very boring I know um, but hopefully we'll be able to use new web3 technology to actually make those areas a lot more transparent and that there's another area which I don't know enough about and uh, I need to get um, educated on which but it's the, the concept of of a bond where money is only released when a certain agreement has been you know achieved so for example you could potentially invest in an oil company if the purpose was for the transition from oil to renewable energy wow. and they will still require that that the the you know investment to do that and make those changes um rather than completely demonizing them so and and releasing it based on on that i um, love that wow that's so cool i'd really like to um uh, look into those developments and i will be <laughs> um, yeah I, again sustainability is something i i really care about a lot and um you know fashion ai is very much tied to that and we're thinking about that all the time you know from materials to supply chain all of those different elements from your standpoint emily w- w- what are the practical projects that support lgbtq is it you know number of lgbtq people in a company is it investing in founders is there anything that's like actually you know practical for for the community yeah i think investing in education would be the very very first key as the society needs to get educated about and also invest in companies and founders. Because even today, with all freedom, there is still people that I myself was scared of showing up in finance. You know, I was like, should I really do that step? So I know there are a lot of people uh, in the community and they don't stay 
loud because they are like, you know, afraid of losing business. So I think investing in education first is the first step. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I do think humility is also another aspect. We need to, because I think what happened is we, you know, we, the general people of the world, uh, were pointing fingers and saying, that's not right, you shouldn't be doing that, whatever it is. And then other, you know, the bigger people uh, would then realize that they had to kind of cover up or create this kind of facade and go along with being there. And we really need people to just admit, you know, I made a mistake. I used to be like this. And you know what? That was a bad train of thought. That was a bad value I had. Um, but I want to go about this in an authentic way. And I do want to hear from people. I think we need to be okay to own up to mistakes and be open enough to say that publicly because you know nobody's perfect sustainability is a great example of like we don't need to be perfect immediately we just need to be on the right path and likewise when it comes to um lgbt like we just need to make sure that we're on the right path it doesn't need to be perfect and we should be okay with not being perfect from the get-go yeah, nobody's perfect. We're all learning, you know. Everything is new. Everything is changing every day. So that's it. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for for your time and, and contributions, Emily. Um, do you have any sort of final thoughts for, for us at, you know, Fashion AI and um, how can we best support you? Yeah, I think uh, regarding fashion, we see a challenge here with metaverse and avatars and how people will present themselves, you know, how LGBTQA plus people will present themselves. And that's a very uh, spicy topic. Like I'm not so deep into the human rights side, but I know, let's say for for example now, if you create an avatar, you just have two options, male and female. So that's going to be something else very soon. A lot of people don't, you know, recognize themselves as male or female. So I think the Reggie Play and Me or other companies that provide avatars should be doing neutral avatars. And that's the next topic that is going to come out in AI fashion, for sure. Mm. I would say the only issue with that I've seen is catfishing. When, yeah. for example, with VChat, where you have men who dress up as very sexualized women just so that they can stand in front, you know, and, and, and it gets confusing for people who want to date, for example, and they want to meet people online. Um, and yeah. that's another spicy topic. Like, do you have... A Security and privacy. Yourself? Or is yeah. this um, escapism? Is it, but I think, you know, ultimately that's transparency and it's up to the platform. This is going to be yeah. a platform for people to escape and have their fantasy version. And then this platform is going to be, you know, you say who you are, um, like on LinkedIn, and, and, you know, you don't want to hide your identity. Amazing. Yeah. I really liked that analogy, like just like LinkedIn, but needing to have like a, skin on top of that basically <laughs> amazing well thank you so much for your contributions i found it very interesting and diverse conversation would yeah. love you to have you on future future fashion fridays yes. um and thank you so much for moderating zen as well oh absolutely, absolutely. i don't know if i did the moderating there though <laughs> but yes thank you so much emily really lovely concept. thank you so much yeah i'm i'm very happy to be part of the fashion AI with you girls and I think we have a bright future. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. 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 Awesome. I guess we can stop recording. Yeah. Um, yeah. And have a really I have